In section 11.6, we're going to discuss phase diagrams. And as we'll see, a phase diagram is basically a map that tells us how a given substance reacts to changes in temperature and pressure. For the most part, in this chapter up to now, we've been focusing mostly on temperature. For a given substance, at very low temperatures, the molecules have a small amount of kinetic energy and they tend to stick together and form a solid. And as we increase the temperature, increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules, they start moving around and eventually they transition for most substances into a liquid and then eventually to a gas. So we can see that low temperatures favor solids, high temperatures favor gases. Pressure is also important and we can visualize the effects of pressure in the following way. If we were at a very high pressure, we're forcing the molecules to be all packed in close together, right? And so high pressures are going to favor the molecules being in a solid. At the other extreme, if we had very low pressure, there's little force that's making the molecules all stick together as a solid. And so it's much easier for them to escape, to go off into the gas phase. So what we see is that high pressures favor a solid, and low pressure is a gas. Remember that we also have encountered some substances that might go directly from being a solid to a gas, like carbon dioxide. Does that mean that liquid carbon dioxide doesn't exist? Or maybe there are combinations of temperature and pressure that would allow us to get liquid carbon dioxide. We'll see later in this lecture that that is true. And then finally, two lectures ago, we also discussed these supercritical fluid which is a, another region in the phase diagram. And we find that one at high temperatures and high pressures. So if we think about the different quadrants of the phase diagram, we can say that at low temperatures and or high pressures, that's in this upper left-hand quadrant of the diagram, we expect a solid. If we go to the opposite conditions, low pressure and high temperature, in that region we expect a gas. And if we have both high temperature and high pressure in this upper right-hand quadrant, that's where we expect a supercritical fluid. And the liquid phase is going to exist somewhere in between these, okay, at intermediate temperatures and pressures. What a phase diagram is telling us is that for a given temperature and pressure, we can have a variety of scenarios. At any place on the phase diagram where we're not either on a line or a point, we just have one phase of matter being stable. But on these lines, let's look at this blue line here, which is called the melting curve. And when you're at the conditions that put you right on the melting curve, we expect a dynamic equilibrium between the solid and the liquid. Imagine a glass containing liquid water and ice cubes. And if we were to put it into a special container, a refrigerator, that had zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure, that is the exact conditions for melting of ice. And we could leave it there for months, and we would still have this mixture of ice and water. Because what's happening is the ice is melting at exactly the same rate the water is freezing. And we call that dynamic equilibrium. If we are on this red line, which is called the vapor pressure curve, on that line, the liquid and the gas are in dynamic equilibrium. Notice also that where the vapor pressure line ends, that's called the critical point. And if we're at temperatures higher than the critical temperature, then we know that a liquid can't exist. Finally, we have this green curve here, which is called the sublimation curve. And on that curve, the solid and the gas are in dynamic equilibrium. So the rate at which molecules are subliming is exactly equal to the rate at which they are depositing. We see two points on our phase diagram as well. This point labeled T is called the triple point. And this is the precise set of conditions at which the solid, liquid, and gas are in equilibrium. So there's only one combination of temperature and pressure where all three phases can be in equilibrium, and that's called the triple point. And this point C, 
we discussed that two lectures back, that's the critical point. So that's the temperature above which a liquid cannot exist. I guess the best way to put it is that is the point at which the vapor pressure curve ends. Let's look at a couple of representative examples. The phase diagram of water, of course, is an important one. And here's what it looks like. What can we glean from looking at this phase diagram? First of all, we see that the blue line, the melting curve, is slanting to the left. Okay, It's mostly vertical, but it slants a bit to the left. So what's going on here? You know, the vertical axis here is pressure. So as you increase the pressure, you know, going vertically, the slope of the melting curve depends on the relative density of the liquid and the solid. And so high pressure is going to favor the denser phase. Normally, that would favor the solid. But remember for water, that solid water is less dense than liquid water. And consequently, that's why this line slopes a little bit to the left. We see that the critical point is at quite a high temperature and pressure, 374 degrees C, 217 atmosphere. And the reason for that is because the intermolecular forces in water are quite strong. Now, if we were to take a horizontal cut at one atmosphere pressure, where this cut crosses the melting curve, the blue line, we call that the normal melting point of water, that's zero degrees C, and where it crosses the red line, the vapor pressure curve, we call that the normal boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees C. The triple point for water is relatively low pressure, but below that pressure, below 0 0.00603 atmospheres, the liquid state of water does not exist. It's not stable. One use of that is something called freeze drying of foods. If you take any food, freeze it, you know, cool it down below the freezing point so the water turns to ice, then you put it into a chamber where the pressure is low enough that you go below the triple point and then you allow it to warm up, what's going to happen is that ice is going to turn into water vapor. That's what is called freeze drying. Let's now look at the phase diagram of carbon dioxide, which is shown here. Generically, it looks pretty similar. However, there are some differences. First of all, even though that the change isn't large, we see that the melting curve now is slanting a little bit to the right. And that's more normal behavior, because normally the solid is going to be denser than the liquid. So going to higher pressures is going to tend to favor the solid over the liquid. But the line is still pretty vertical, and that's because, as we've been talking about in this chapter, the density of a solid and a liquid aren't wildly different from one another. The critical point is more accessible here, and two lectures ago we talked about the use of supercritical CO2 in various industrial applications, and you can stabilize supercritical CO2 much more easily than supercritical water, as we see here. And then, if we were to take a cut at one atmosphere of pressure here, you can see that we go from the solid directly over to the gas, right? That's sublimation. So carbon dioxide does not have a normal boiling point. It has a normal sublimation point, and that's at minus 78.5 degrees C. We do, however, see that liquid CO2 does exist. It does show up on our phase diagram, but we don't get to it until we get to higher pressures. So any substance with a triple point that has a pressure greater than one atmosphere, of course, is going to behave like CO2. It will go directly from the solid state into the gaseous state without going through the liquid. And you only then find the liquid phase at high pressure. Well, let's finish this lecture by seeing if you can interpret a phase diagram. What I'm showing here is the phase diagram of methane. And I would like you to look at the questions over on the left and see if you can answer all of them using this phase diagram. I want you to pause the video, work through the problem, come back, and we'll go over the answer. Let's go over the answers now. First question asks us to identify the critical point. Right, so the critical point 
is where the vapor pressure curve ends. So the critical point here is going to be point 3. The next question asks us to identify the triple point. Right? The triple point is the conditions where the gas, liquid, and solid are all in equilibrium with one another. And of course, that is the starting point of the vapor pressure curve. And so that's going to be point 1. The next question asks us to identify the normal boiling point of methane. So that's going to be the temperature at which a line drawn at one atmosphere crosses from the liquid to the gas. Right? And we see that that line is going to go over from the liquid to the gas, cross the vapor pressure curve right here, and that turns out to be approximately minus 160 degrees C. 161 if we're being precise. The next question that's asked is, what is methane at standard temperature and pressure? One atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius. Well, that's just point 0.2 on our graph, and you can see that, in fact, methane would be a gas under those conditions. Actually, methane is the principal component in natural gas, and so from the name, you can kind of infer that it would be a gas. A related question asks, if we had a piece of solid methane at very low temperature and we were to warm it up, would it melt or would it sublime? And we can see from the dashed line here that it would in fact go through the liquid phase. So methane at one atmosphere will melt before it vaporizes. And then finally, if we were at STP, at point 2 here, and we were to compress methane, trying to make it, let's say, into a liquid, what would happen? Would it become a liquid? And the answer is no. If you compress methane uh, at some pressure up here around 100 atmospheres, it goes actually into the supercritical fluid state. Right? So it's not possible using pressure to compress methane at zero degrees C and get a liquid. This actually is quite important commercially because natural gas is shipped all over the world and Shipping a gas is not very efficient. I mean, gases take up a lot of space. So when methane is shipped, it's actually made into a liquid, LNG, liquid natural gas. And to do so, they actually have to cool the methane down to, I think they cool it down to about 112 degrees. So they cool it down to about right here, and they put it on big ships uh, that move across the ocean and take it to other countries where it's sold. All right, well, that's the end of chapter 11 for us. Come back next week and we'll talk about chapter 12, Solids and Modern Materials.